This is Work University, and I'm Annalisa Felix. This is where I interview people from various employment backgrounds and get the inside scoop on what their job is really like. If you're just getting into the workforce, or if you're curious about getting into something new, listen up. Now let's get into it. Hello, I am here with Jared Mesa, who is a ballet master at the Western Arkansas Ballet. Jared, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Great. So you are a ballet master. What does that mean? What do you do? Because, well, you know, I, I I see ballet. I've been to some shows. But what is a ballet master? It sounds so mysterious. It does. It does. They act, I, I think that they, uh, they hype it up with that word master a lot. I like that. But um, ballet master is a person who works for a uh, – a ballet school, ballet company mm-hmm. that in in my job here at Western Arkansas Ballet, I'm I have a couple different things that not all ballet masters do, but in my job here I do. And the but the main one is I am in charge of making sure the dancers are prepared for what they have to do. So that means that I teach classes. Mm-hmm. I um I do private lessons. I do a lot of coaching um, for different roles, de- uh, depending on, um, you know, solos or duets or trios. Mm-hmm. And um, I also, in this job in particular, I also am in charge of making sure that um, the schedule uh, works for all of the choreography we're learning mm-hmm. and also that um, the story is told the correct way in each ballet. Okay. So how many shows, how how many ballet shows are you responsible for um, at your particular school? At our school, I'm in charge of five. Five, okay. So there's five. And I saw the schedule there. There's so many different classes. So there's got to be a lot of, you know, juggling and now, there are different levels, different age ranges. How soon or how early do people start? Like, I, I've seen six years old, and then what's mm-hmm. the range? Well, the um, at our school, we start at four years old. Wow. Um, there, there are some people that start younger than that. But really, I would say between the age of four and six, even seven years old, we're we're really what we're teaching is what we call motor skills. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we're making sure they know how to skip, they know how to gallop, they know how to move the way we want them to. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's 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 a lot of um, hand eye coordination and that kind of thing. And the real training for a ballet dancer, I wouldn't say starts until maybe the ten to twelve year old, because um, you know to do what we do, it it's it's a discipline just like if you were taking karate or mm-hmm. something like that. It's a real discipline and you have, you have to dedicate a lot of time to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so you um, 10 to 12 is really the time when you say, you know, I think I want to pursue this ballet thing a little more, or you say, you know what, I love taking ballet and I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it more on a recreational um, standpoint. Right. And so um, it's, is it safe to say there are some people who just want to do it for, you know, for fun and exercise and other people want to get in it to be more, uh, they want to be in a show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when, when I say a serious uh, student, that doesn't necessarily mean that a non-serious student wouldn't be in a show, but that also mean, that means that they're going to, they want to pursue bigger uh, and better things, and they want to move to the next level. They want to take it maybe in college, or they want to join a, a professional company or something mm-hmm. like that. You have to uh, have a very serious mindset um, as far as um, your training to get to that place. Okay. So in addition to the classes and the training, is there a back end where you have to meet with like a board of directors or, you know, are there other people involved that maybe are behind the scenes that, that we wouldn't know about? Well, um, there, there definitely are a lot of people behind the scenes, um, for, to get my job 
there is a board of directors and they have to the, the artistic director is actually the person in charge. There's two people. There's an artistic director and an executive director. And the artistic director makes all is the last say in all of the artistic artistic choices, like mm-hmm. whether we're going to do this ballet or that ballet, mm-hmm. or even uh, you know which version of music we use or that kind of thing. So um, that's the artistic director's job, and the executive director is more in charge of making sure that the company, the studio's insurance is paid on time and mm-hmm. the more of the paperwork that, you know, right. as, as arts oriented people, we don't always like to do. Right. The, um, the business and the finance. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yeah, but we, we, we definitely have a board and yeah. on our board, we have, um, we have a president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, and it runs just like a board, any board would sure. to make sure that we survive yeah. in uh, a world where, um, you know, we're a nonprofit. So we, mm-hmm. everything we do is about making sure we keep the doors open. Right. Now, if we can switch gears here, tell me, how did you get here? When did you start? When did the, you know, when did you wonder about dancing? And, and just tell me how the, the path uh, to here started. Well, you know, I would I would say it's very unconventional, mm-hmm. but um, we I started in high school. Now, mm-hmm. as a male in the dance world, it you can start later in in your teenage years and still make a lot of things happen for yourself. Mm-hmm. For the women, it, you have to start younger. Um, but I started in in high school. I was in theater, and I. Um, I was a thespian and you get points for being a thespian for different shows that you do that aren't uh, part of the theater group at your high school. So I did a, um, a show with the dancers at the high school and I found it a lot easier and more fun to learn choreography to dance than to learn the lines in the play I was in. So I kind of switched gears from there and started doing more of the dance part Um, and then from there I started taking at a studio um, called Yuma Ballet Theater and Dancers Workshop in Yuma, Arizona Mm -hmm. and I um, that's kind of where I started transitioning into saying this is what I want to do and when I first started I only took for like an hour and a half on a on a Saturday mm-hmm. every week. And then when I said, this is what I want to do, it jumped from taking a one and a half hour class on Saturday to being at the studio three hours a day, Monday through Saturday. Wow. Yeah. And, and this is starting in high school. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, our Saturdays were a little bit longer, um, but for the most part, I would say that it was about that. Um, now, one of the things that I feel that I have that really helped me is that before I danced, I did theater. So mm-hmm. the act, the acting side of being a dancer, I feel like I had already, uh, not that I achieved the, the highest goal in that, but I, I knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. But before that, I was in music and I, I played music for seven to eight years um, before I even started doing any of the acting stuff. So not only did I, could I act out the parts, but I could hear the music and when things were supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. So that I think really helped me on the dance side. And Mm -hmm. in this, in this job here, I also, um, I do a lot of what, what you would call the production manager job. Mm -hmm. So I, I help set the schedule for the theater. I'm in charge of making sure that all of the lights and the sound and all of the stage hands and all the sets and everything happens the way it should happen in the theater. Mm -hmm. When I was, uh, when my main focus was theater, I was also learning the backstage stuff like the sets and the props and the lights and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, I had all of these things that I had studied for a minimum of four years that I already had in my like bag before I went into dancing. Wow. So I think 
it was just a unique situation, I think. That is so interesting because there's, it seems like there's so many moving parts in a production that myself as, uh, you know, somebody who just buys tickets and I sit down, but you know, you don't really think about these sets and who made them and they need to come in just at the right time and the costumes and, you know, then the teaching and, and everything that goes into it. And then the people behind the scenes, you know, they don't always get a lot of credit, you know, as, as, as much as the people on stage. So there's so much happening. And I'm sure that that's the things that, that you have to coordinate. Absolutely. Yes. Um, uh, a lot of unsung heroes in the theater mm-hmm. uh, would be the stage manager, the light designer. Um, there's uh, people that pull um, what we call the ropes mm-hmm. or um, that's a, they help make all the backdrops fly in and at the correct time. Um, the prop manager, the costume mistress, all of these people that um, report to the artistic director. Um, they all come together because I know for a fact that, you know, as, as much as I would like to think I could, I cannot do do this kind of work by Mm -hmm. myself. Right. Okay. Now let's jump ahead a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. I I had a question. So a lot of the titles are in French, correct? Correct. In, in uh, ballet class, they are. Yes. Yeah. And so I, I know there's a drummer boy and say the nutcracker is, are, is it mostly in French? I would say that the 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 roles may have had French names a long time ago, mm-hmm. but in the in the ballet world now, since there's so much stuff that's done in um, in America now, mm-hmm. as far like Nutcracker, for instance, you know, the majority of people that are coming to watch a show aren't going to know the French terms for all this stuff, but um, in ballet class when we're learning steps, the steps are all in French. Mm-hmm. Um, so like the first step that any dancer learns is called a plié. Mm-hmm. And plié uh, means to bend. It's a, uh, so we're really what we're learning is we're learning how to bend our knees and our ankles and our hips and in a plié. And the next step you would learn is called a tendu, which means to stretch. So it's kind of the, almost the opposite in a way. Um, where you're extending your your leg and your foot out and you're stretching your leg out to the maximum position. Mm-hmm. And I saw that um, that there are like certain, there's like four major steps that you need to start off with knowing, like like the um, one, position one, posi- you know, things like ah, that. Yes. And then there are positions with your hands that, you know, you have to know. So like any... Um, you know, anything you get into, there are certain basics and foundation, um, mm-hmm. you know, that you need to know. And that's very similar in in ballet. And that was interesting to find out. So mm-hmm. um, I, I have a question now. Um, tell me about your experience with the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders and Cheryl uh, Crow. <laughs> uh, well, that that was, a, again, I, I was in the right place at the right time. And really all that was was um, – the Dallas Cowboys every year, they, they're one of the teams that plays on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And, um, on Thanksgiving, they always show the halftime show. Mm -hmm. And that year, Cheryl Crow was performing and, and with the Dallas Cowboys and the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. And, um, I had a friend who lives in Dallas who had called me and said that they were looking for more males to be in the show um, because they didn't find enough dancers where they were. And so I said, of course, why would I not want to, you know, do this? And so um, I, I got to be on the field for the first uh, two quarters of the, um, the football game, which is great. It was like having, you know, front row seats. Mm -hmm. And, and then um, when the, the show started, we all went out there and, you know, we had a great time and uh, performed at the halftime. Oh, that's so fun. How cool. Now, can you've had a long career already, and you're still young. You've had a long career. You've been doing this for a long time since high mm-hmm. school. Yeah. Any obstacles, any bumps in the road that you've encountered or interesting stories you want to share? Um, there, I would say there are a lot of obstacles. Um, 
you know, a lot of the, um, a lot of it comes down to, you know, what you're given naturally. And, uh, there's always going to be something for everybody, you know, like, um, me, although, cause I'm a guy, it's a little bit different, but I, I wouldn't say I'm the, the most flexible person. Mm-hmm. And, um, it is important that you're flexible and that you work on your, um, feet mm-hmm. and making sure that they're strong, but also making sure that they're flexible. And that's something that I, you know, every dance company looks for, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter because as a guy, they're looking for somebody to, to lift the girls mm-hmm. and not always for somebody who has to have the best flexibility or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. Also knowing um lot we call it a line. So it's making an aesthetic look, not only for the dancer, the girl dancer, but for the male dancer that's partnering her mm-hmm. so that um, you, that's something that you have to learn. Um, another, I guess another big obstacle uh, nowadays, and this, this is more of a recent thing. And by recent, I mean, within the last decade or so, I'm mm-hmm. going to um, is working on, um, college now as a as a um a dancer college isn't necessarily um the always the best choice and it's not that it's that college is ever a bad choice it really just depends on on you and what you expect to get out of your dance career so do you mean people who study ballet in college correct and then get a and get a degree because i know that there are dance degrees yes exactly um, I have a friend named Molly Faulkner who um, lives in California, and she has her PhD in in dance. Mm-hmm. And um, so you can go you can go to the highest level in your education as a dancer. Wow. Um, but the the reason I say that is because your prime time for um, dancing is from eighteen to you know twenty six. Yeah. Um, you you can dance past then. But it's really important that um, you you're trying to to find that work in your twenties, early twenties. Yeah. Okay. So you think maybe that could you know uh, hinder the amount of opportunities? I I would definitely say so. I think if I would have started at a younger age, you know, maybe middle school or even elementary school, mm-hmm. that there may have been some opportunities that weren't given to me at that age I was because, you know, I had started in high school. So technically, as soon as high school was done, I should have already been looking at what I wanted to do as far as a dancer. And I was still putting my feet in the kiddie side of the pool of dance and really still working on um, getting to that next level. Mm-hmm. While the the girls had already had maybe six, seven years into it. Exactly. Yeah. Now, what are some of the most common injuries for dancers and do you guys also work on um conditioning and diet or you know uh, weight train i don't know not like weight training but like um mm-hmm. uh, lifting weights things like that absolutely um the the most common injuries that a dancer might have are going to be in their knees um i i know a lot of dancers that have torn acls and mcls and things like that um also in your ankles i I personally have only had a minor injury in my ankle. Um, you also can, uh, a lot of dancers may get tendonitis mm-hmm. in, in their Achilles um, just because we use our legs so much. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be the main thing. So every single class is designed to alleviate those injuries in the future. Um, technically speaking with all of the stuff we do in dance, um, you, I would consider them like calisthenics. So, um, you know, using your own body weight as your weight for mm-hmm. your training versus exterior weight. But as a dance, a, a male dancer, you, you definitely need a little bit of weight training. Um, you need to learn the mechanics of how to lift. There is, there is a, what we call a technique to lifting. It's not always brute strength, although sometimes, you know, if something's not going completely well on stage, you may need to use more brute strength to make it happen. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, um, I'm definitely using uh, technique to get the lift 
happening the way you're supposed to ha- make it happen. And, and that makes sense because it's a hard floor. And yeah. it seems like you're always working on a hard floor with really nothing under your feet. And so that can be, I'm sure, hard on your whole body. Yeah. Uh, actually, there is there is a little bit underneath you it's called it's called a sprung floor Mm -hmm. so it's usually probably i would say maybe two three inches um off of the actual hard floor and and it's it's made with a frame that um you put layers of like plywood on top of Mm -hmm. so that the mid the centers of each of the pieces of plywood kind of give a little bit just to help us to take some some strain off of our legs but it doesn't always Right. Help as much as we would like it to. <laughs> right. To give it, you know, a little a little give at least. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. OK. Well, Jared, I, I appreciate uh, your time and giving me, you know, your your experience. And, and in closing, what advice would you give to somebody who wants to be a professional dancer? The, the main thing that I would say is that you if you have to give it 100 percent. You have, in, in certain senses, and this is probably a horrible thing to say, but it, I feel like it's kind of true. You have to, you have to put your girlfriend on hold. You have mm-hmm. to put your boyfriend on hold. Mm-hmm. You have to put maybe starting a family on hold a little bit because there's so many things that need to be taken care of in the dance world, and um, they're not always going to. It's like show business, you know. They're not always going to see it your way and it's going to be their way of the highway um but it's definitely worth it Mm -hmm. you know as you go through those um motions um i can't see myself doing anything else right now besides Mm -hmm. um teaching and dancing i still dance i'm still i still do shows all the time um so yeah that's i I would say that was the main advice if you're going to do it you have to give a hundred percent wow that's great advice Jared, thanks again for your time and your experience and and giving us a a view of behind the scenes in in ballet. And and I I just really appreciate you taking the time. Well, thank you so much. I was more than overjoyed to do this. It was great. Thank you for listening. I hope you liked this episode. If you have a particular job you'd like me to look into, send me an email at workuniversityforyou at gmail.com. That's workuniversity, the number four, the letter U, at gmail.com. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.